Coming up next, my review of the newest release from Ormond Jane. This is Gatsby 22. If you like fresh and you like vetiver, two kind of attributes that you don't normally see in a fragrance, you're gonna to wanna to hear about this one. See my full review coming up next. Welcome back everybody to Joel The Nose. And today I'm going to be re reviewing a fragrance from one of my favorite houses, Ormond Jane. Talked about them a lot, done some videos recently, including talking about Linda Pilkington, the founder and creative director of the house who was here in Miami just a few days ago giving a masterclass at Osme Perfumery it was incredible. And just wanna to uh, highlight a couple things she mentioned. What she did during the masterclass is she took out, uh, she, she brought with her fragrance notes. So she would have, say for example, natural jasmine and then synthetic jasmine or natural ambergris. So ambergris, for those of you who don't know, it's, it comes from the whale, it comes from the, the basically the bowels, the stomach, or some people believe the bottom end of the whale. It's spit out by the whale or it's pooped out, it floats in the ocean and then it's harvested. So it doesn't hurt the whale at all. It's something that's completely natural, but it's very rare, it's very expensive. And she actually had some there, including just probably 15 or 20 other notes, a uh, natural and synthetic, and you would smell them. And ambergris, what totally shocked me, I never smelled natural ambergris. I've smelled synthetic a lot of times. In fact, I have some in my collection back here. And that bottle, when you open it, it smells like you've stepped into an outhouse, you know, like a porta potty outside at like a concert or a sporting event where it just stinks. <laughs> That's what it smells like. But natural ambergris, you can't even smell it. So she put it on, for example, a stick like this and dipped it in and you can barely smell it. And it's not until you put it on your skin that you start to smell a little bit because your natural oils of your skin bring out. So what she was explaining is when you have a really concentrated natural element like that, it's so concentrated that that's why you use perfume oils or alcohol to bring out the smell and also your skin. So anyways, cool little factoid about uh, natural elements in perfumery. Um, another interesting fact, and I'll get into this in a second as I talk about the fragrance. So what am I talking about today? This is Gatsby 22. Excuse me, I just dropped. Oh, I don't want the microphone to be messed up. All right, uh, this is Gatsby 22. That is, of course, all the bottles uh, pretty much look the same. Ormond Jane, very consistent, very cool, very classic, very British, very, uh, I think, just elegant. So I have the sample here. I've been wearing it a few days now. Um, and this is an Eau de Parfum. And uh, so don't be, I guess, uh, surprised because you're gonna smell this and you're gonna look at the notes and you're gonna think this is a freshy. This is not gonna give me good performance. Uh, I get really good performance on basically almost every fragrance that I've worn by her. I can't think of one off the top of my head where I have not gotten at least seven or eight hours. I don't get, uh, uh, I don't get beast mode, meaning I don't get 10 hours, 12 hours, but I consistently get a good seven, eight hours from almost every fragrance I wear of hers or of, from Ormond Jane. So Gatsby 22, as you can imagine, is kind of based on the great Gatsby, the classic F. Scott Fitzgerald novel set in the roaring 20s and the kind of elegance and extravagance of that time period and parties and music and dancing. That's what this is based on. So this is supposed to be an elegant, crisp, fresh, enlightening or enlivening fragrance. Uh, and right when you smell it, you're gonna get that. So let me spray it on my skin here. And again, I've been wearing this for a few days now, but, um, and this is, as you can see, just the, the little uh, decant that I have here. And immediately you get this interesting, uh, fresh, like just like, it, 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 it kind of explodes of this bergamot, Sicilian lemon, and pink pepper. So it's got a little bit of like this interesting twist to it. Um, it's not, it's fresh, but it's also, 
don't know how to describe it. I think that combination of the pink pepper gives a little bit of a spiciness, gives a little bit of a character, gives a little bit of a kick or a zing. That's what I'm looking for. It gives it a little bit of a zing. So this is, it's fresh at the top, but it's got this like zingy, almost tanginess to it. Tangy, that's another word I'm working for. It's like a zing and tangy. <laughs> uh, definitely a very tangy opening. Something that I can see being worn, especially during spring and summer. It's really fresh. Again, almost all her fragrances, I would say, are very good when it comes to date night and um, wearing, for example, with something like a suit. Really crisp, clean, you know, elegant suit. But very, uh, I would say, again, tangy opening. It's got some just a little bit of an edge to it from your typical citrusy opening. What's really nice though to me is the heart note. And what I'll say here is I love vetiver. I've talked about Zizon, which is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. It's what got me into niche, niche perfumery like almost five years ago when I first bought it at Osme Perfumery. Zizon, it's to me a masterpiece vetiver fragrance. This fragrance is not as deep or I would say as vetiver-ish, vetiver-ish, I'm gonna make up a word. Uh, this does have the vetiver, but it keeps it a little bit more, this to me is gonna be more of a unisex fragrance. Zizon, although unisex, definitely unisex, to me, lends a little bit more of that kind of 80s, old school vibe to it. It's very green fragrance. This one is more crisp, lighter, and the vetiver, I think, is gonna be a little bit more subdued here but it's really, really beautiful, especially when you mix it. So the vetiver is in the base, but when it mixes with this middle note, and the middle notes, and just so you can see the bottle, I, I, the middle notes have violet, orange blossom, and osmanthus. So I love this combination of violet and vetiver. To me, this combination of violet and vetiver is what makes this fragrance unique and I think an exceptional choice for those looking to get into something that's a little bit fresh, but still gives you eau de, perform, eau, eau de parfum performance, and is not your typical freshie. Something that's gonna give you a little bit of a different vibe and something that you can wear pretty much all year round. This is that type of fragrance. But Violet, right, Violet is one of the classic perfume materials going way back over 100 years ago. If you look at the early perfumes, the, the early 1900s, Violet was used almost in every perfume. It can be very floral, very sweet. I think what happens here is I love the introd introduction of Violet. You don't necessarily, necessarily see Violet used a lot anymore in modern fragrances. And yes, of course it's used, but not nearly like it used to be. So I like this kind of, I think, especially in the theme of this Gatsby 22, this great Gatsby, the Roaring 20s, this is, that violet gives it that link. So what I, again, I like when a perfume is, when you look at the whole totality of the name, what they were going for, if you look at the brief or what they were trying to establish here with this kind of Roaring 20s, great Gatsby throwback, but yet with a modern twist, that violet to me is the link back to that time period. And mixed with the vetiver, it's a really, in those mantis, gives it a really nice, subdued, clean vetiver. And then also, if you look at the dry down, it's got leather, tonka bean, uh, musk, just a really sexy dry down that is gonna be, I think, liked by both men and women equally. Wonderful fragrance. One last thing I'll uh, note about what Linda Pilkington said at her masterclass the other night, they typically have about five different accords, okay, or what they call bases, that they base almost every fragrance off of. And this was really cool because, you know, when you smell a certain fragrance house, like for example, Ormond Jane or Parfums de Marly, right, you know you're smelling it when you smell it, even if you don't even see the bottle. There's a DNA in there in a lot of these fragrance houses. And she flat out said, and it was so cool, she was so open, she goes, we have a DNA because Every fragrance they make uses one of those five bases. So you can smell that typical base, whether it be a Sheepra base or more a woody, uh, like a oud base, or maybe something with more of a fougere base. Everything 
interline has that and they build around it so that way you can smell it and there's a thread that runs through each fragrance. I uh, Just really cool for you perfume uh, niche nerds out there like me that just love to dive in and see how something's really made, especially for someone like me who's been making their own perfumes now for a couple of years. To see that was just, I don't know, kind of blew me away. So there you have it, Gatsby 22. Again, uh, I think, I don't know, I'll have to check on the price on this, but it's I know it's probably around $150 for, I, they have the, the 50 milliliter bottles that you can buy, which to me again, such an excellent price for this top of the line niche house. Let me know what you guys think. Have you worn it yet? Have you tried it? What are some other favorite Ormond, John, Ormond Jane fragrances of yours? Um, I like talking about this house and uh, especially now that I got to meet Linda, she's an, really a hero of mine, kind of like an idol in the perfume industry and getting to meet her and talk to her was just a real highlight for me in my uh, niche journey perfume journey. So there you go. I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you for your support and you know it. Peace, love, and perfume.